Okay, I'm starting the recording. Hello, everyone. And uh, we are going to discuss in this lecture stream ciphers. And uh, yeah, this is part of uh, fourth chapter. Okay, get my presentation here. Presentation mode. Right, get my uh, pen here as well. All right, so um, to begin with, uh, I want to acknowledge uh, the this test textbook, a uh, very good textbook. I uh, took some of the slides material here in this lecture. I recommend, I highly recommend this textbook, uh, Christoph Parr, um, Jamp. Pelzi, uh, good textbook. Um, so, um, acknowledge these people. The outline, uh, we're gonna talk about the uh, introduction to stream ciphers. And of course, you can't discuss stream, cipher, stream ciphers without uh, discussing random number generators. Uh, we're gonna discuss the one-time pad uh, scheme and linear feedback shift registers, okay, hardware implementation to generate pseudo random numbers, and an example of a stream ciphers. Okay, all right. Okay, if you look in the uh, in terms of where we are in uh, cryptography, uh, so uh, obviously we are discussing symmetric ciphers. And symmetric ciphers, we know that um, the um, the encryption algorithm. Uh, so this is this is our plain text, right? And we encrypt with a key, right? And then we send this data into to to the recipient, and at the recipient we decrypt the data to get back the uh, plain text. And here in between the generated uh, 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 the generated uh, binary from the plain text is the cipher text, and this is what we transmit. And uh, in both the, uh, the the in the encryption and the decryption, we we use the very same key. If we do that, then this is symmetric encryption or symmetric ciphers. Okay, so symmetric ciphers can sp uh, are split into um, two categories, block ciphers and stream ciphers. And stream ciphers is what we're going to explain. And uh, primarily, really, the difference or the key difference is how many uh, uh, bits you are encrypting. If you are encrypting one bit at a time, then you're talking about stream ciphers. Okay. If you are encrypting block of data, then we are talking about block ciphers. So it is the quantity of data that you are encrypting uh, bit by bit versus a block of data. Block of data, 32-bit, 128-bit, 64-bit versus one bit, or sometimes we say a few bits, but we're going to stick with one bit better. Okay? All right. So... Um, uh, so here, here's what we what we just said in 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 more uh, in in a stream cipher, right? You you take one bit at a, at a time. You encrypt it, right, and then you send it out, right? Uh, so it we encrypt bits individually, obviously, and and typically these ciphers are small and fast and and used for small devices in an embedded systems. Okay, they tend to be lightweight ciphers. But in the in the in the case of block ciphers, you take a a chunk of uh, of bits, a, a block, all right, a block, and then you you encrypt it, and then you send out the ciphered uh, block. Okay, uh, so typically they used for uh, heavy duty applications and for really more secure uh, transmission. Okay, so uh, bit by bit versus block of data. All right. Okay, so stream ciphers. Um, typically, a stream cipher. Okay. Um, again, this is this is what we, what we are 
we're still comparing a a a a, a stream cipher versus a block cipher and uh, uh, you know in the stream cipher since we are encrypting bit by bit or the bits of plain text we use one bit at a time of the key so uh we we, we need to to have this this stream of bits uh generated by uh, uh some kind of bit stream generator okay uh, so that it will provide me with these keys bit uh observe that these are well th typically called a random generator observe that we have to generate the same key bits the same key stream right for both the encryption algorithm and the decryption algorithm okay so uh for a stream cipher the key component the 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 very most important key component it is the bit stream generation that's very important right that's very important because otherwise you don't have that much of and then and then you xor these individual bits with these uh, uh, uh with these uh, key bits then you the, this what creates for you the cipher text in terms of bits and at the at the at the recipient side you decrypt of course you have the same to, you have to have the same bit generation algorithm of course we 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 go back to the block cipher and we say that here we really block we we encrypt a block of data okay and we're gonna take a look at algorithms later on as an example of that <clears throat> okay um key thing here a key thing here that we should know is that in the in we talk in symmetric encryption all right the the keys used to encrypt and decrypt are the same so one key idea or one key feature of the symmetric encryption is that the key is shared between the encryption algorithm and the decryption algorithm okay all right <clears throat> so um basically here in the stream cipher we encrypt data uh, uh one bit uh, at a time sometimes we allow few bits like two bits and three bits up to a byte at a time by combining the plain text with a, a a key stream so we combine the plain text with the key stream right this is the key stream because it's coming from a some kind of random bit generation the key stream is a sequence of pseudo random bits okay uh, and we're gonna take a look at some example of those and the encryption typically done using xor so the xor operation it combines these uh, text bits with the key uh, stream. Okay, so these are these are the the data bits. This is my plain text bits, and here is my uh, key stream bits. The, this is the key stream, right? Bit one bit at a time. We combine them using an XOR. <clears throat> okay, and that uh, this Y here is generated. <clears throat> this Y here, the 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 ith bit of the cipher, the ith bit of the cipher, is created by encrypting the ith bit of the key stream with the ith bit of the plain text. Okay. And the key feature here is that we are dealing with bits, single bits at a time or a few bits. We allow sometimes few bits. Okay, so bit at a time. All right. So another notation, by the way, is to use this notation, um, some textbook, which is the same thing. Basically, you are saying that I'm using uh, the 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 ith bit of the uh, uh, key stream to encrypt the ith bit of the of the of the plain text uh, and this is an east uh, designate encryption algorithm to generate the ith bit of the cipher stream or the cipher uh, text okay now in terms of uh, the security uh, cipher depends entirely on this uh, on this on this uh, 
uh, key stream. So, so basically, this is this is this is the main thing that maintain your security. Okay, and uh, the the conditions to generate those. Of course, I have a generator here. What are the conditions? Uh, this should be random, right? You really need to make it so because if if it is if it is if it is not uh, that random uh, and can be uh, easily reproduced and predicted, then uh, the the attackers can can do the same thing and and recover the plain text bits, and it must be re reproducible because uh, the receiver at the receiving end they need when they receive the Y, right? They need to to regenerate these uh, bit streams, right? So that they can uh, they can uh, get back the uh, the the plain text. Okay, so so this is this this should be the same block here. So we see it, we say that these uh, uh, keys key uh, stream has to be reproducible, and uh, you can you can think of uh, these uh, stream ciphers as synch synchronous or asynchronous. Um, so the key stream, uh, uh, the, the the key stream uh, depends only on the key. Okay, some sometimes we use an initialization vector here, but in the asynchronous, we uh, uh, in the key generation we use sometimes some some of these uh, generated generated uh, cipher uh, text bits that go back. So there is that feedback, and this feedback is in the asynchronous cipher stream. Okay. Okay, we talked about. Oops, sorry. We talked about this XOR. Okay, just just to remind you, this is uh, the XOR. Um, we covered this in a, in an earlier uh, courses like uh, discrete uh, math and uh, digital logic. But just a reminder, uh, the XOR operation. Um, Uh, if we are XORing uh, a bit from XI and one bit from SI, then we have these possibilities, four possibilities. And whenever the, 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 the bits uh, are the same, right, the output is zero. And whenever the bits are different, right, right the output is one. Okay, this is the XOR operation. And sometimes we refer to it mathematically as Modular two addition, okay. Modular two addition. Uh, so, for example, here I'm adding one plus one, okay. Mode two, right? So that is equal to two mode two, which is equal to zero. Sorry, which is equal to zero. And this is what I have here. Okay. So XOR is an a mode m modular two addition. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let, let's let's go back. We say that the, the, it's very important this key gen the key stream generator to be designed carefully. So let's see uh, how uh, w what generates this key generator. Well, it is generated by uh, random number generators, right? And these random number generators uh, we we typically abbreviate them as RNGs. And they are uh, split into three categories generally: true random number generators, pseudo random number generators, and cryptographically secure pseudo random number generators. Now, true random number generators, right? Uh, they are characterized by the fact that their output cannot re be cannot be reproduced. Okay. But the pseudo-random generator, which is this one here, uh, the pseudo-random number generators generate sequence which are computed from initial seed. Okay, typically you have an initial value, okay, or seed, and cryptographic, uh, cryptogra uh, cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generators, uh, which are abbreviated by this. Uh, our special type of pseudo random number generator and uh, unpredictable. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at every one of those. So, the true random, the, the first category here, with, which is the true random number generators, 
They are characterized by the fact that their output cannot be reproduced. Okay, so for example, here's here's an example. Suppose I'm I'm throwing in at uh, one hundred coin. Okay, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm throwing a coin one hundred times, and then I'm recording. Uh, what happened in these in these trials? And so was the first time the coin comes up as a tail, tail, head, head, then tail, tail, tail. Okay, based on the results of of where the coin land up on the floor. Okay, which face or which size side it is. Now, if I need if I need as a, a, a you know uh, if I, if I say I need a special sequence to occur. Okay, let's say for example I'm looking for all that 100 times trial should be heads. Well, what's the possibility of that happening? It is one over 200. Very remote possibility. Okay, very slim chance. So true number generator are based on physical processes, right? So it includes flipping a coin, okay? Uh, rolling a dice, semiconductor noise, uh, clock jitter, and radioactive decay see these these kind of things that that are really um uh, yeah uh, you know tr truly inject randomness in 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 your generation of the number okay in cryptography the true number generators are often needed to generate a key the keys for session okay so uh of course then then we distribute them to the to the to the entities to to, to use them for uh, for cryptographic algorithms. So key sessions typically use the uh, this method through number uh, through random number generators. So in other words, uh, I can come in this morning to my office and I say um, I can I can I can work an algorithm which 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 is a true uh, uh, random number generator and I have inputs to this to this to this thing, which uses, okay, how many people I saw today with uh, glasses? Um, how many people, eyeglasses? Uh, how many people I, I, I met uh, with, uh, with, with the blue shirt, for instance? Um, and um, what, was, what was the um, uh, temperature, okay, uh, when I walked in my office? Um, and then, um uh, did i did i did i see uh, for instance uh, you know how many times i have to stop for the traffic light right uh in my in my way to the office so these kind of things that is really extremely very very hard to predict right and it it, it you are kind of injecting that randomness into your true number a true random number generator Okay, uh, similarly to these events. Okay, you're looking at events basically uh, that that are very hard to predict, and and they become the the, the initial values and seeds for your algorithm to produce uh, unique random sequences. Okay, all right. Pseudo random generators we can generate them from initial seed value. Okay. And uh, typically, the output stream has uh, it's, it has a good really statistical properties, and can be pre reproduced. That is very important, because I, if I, I when when I use them in my algorithms, I have to use the I have to use this stream at the encryption, and I have to use this stream at the decryption. All right. Now. Uh, uh, these true random uh, generators, I can't use them in my algorithm because whatever sequence coming up here, it is it, it it's unique. I can't reproduce it. I can't uh, call the the receiver and says, "Hey, you know, um, uh, here is a good algorithm. Check how many guys has uh, uh, eyeglasses and how many wearing blue shirts and what's the temperature in your office and how many traffic stops you had to do this morning." Well, the, the 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 recipient will have a unique sequence uh, uh, of events, so it, it's going to end up different SI, different uh, key uh, uh, key 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 bits, uh, key stream bits. So, uh, for for the recipient and the the sender to have uh, the same 
uh, the same uh, uh, sort of uh, key streams, we need to use pseudo random generators because they are reproducible. Okay, the encryption and the decryption will use the same key stream. So here's here's an example. Okay, we have an initial seed. So and then you multiply this number with uh, with a previous value, and then you add a, a number. Okay, and this all this is 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 doing this modular two to the thirty one, and and this is uh, uh, limits the number of bits of your answer. Okay, um, and and so in general we can we can uh, uh, very good uh, algorithms. These are uh, number generators. Okay, so we have a family of uh, of uh, that ref we refer to them as uh, linear con uh, congruential generators, and they are uh, similar to the previous example. You have a seed. I think we are back in uh, our line is back connecting. Okay. Okay. So we are. Okay, see, we seem to have uh, some technical uh, difficulties here. I hope we are over with those. Let's go back to our lecture here. Okay, okay. Um, we said that uh, uh, an example of these, uh, 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 the, uh, the random, the pseudo random number generator is the uh, simple uh, linear congruential generator, which consists of a seed, right? And then recursively generate uh, these, uh, uh, these, uh, these bits. So you have uh, the, or these numbers. So you have the SI 
uh, uh, plus 1 depends on SI, and SI depends on SI minus 1, etc., all the way to until I reach S0. Okay, so here obviously you can generate S1, and then S2, then S3, etc. Okay, so uh, we depend on A, B, and S0 as unknowns, and this becomes my key. And the size of A and B and, and SI, you know, uh, to be 100 bit. So, uh, um, so we have 300 bit of unknowns. Okay, now it turned out, unfortunately, it's very easy to solve this system if you have S1 and S2. Uh, so you, you, you really can recover these values A, B, because you have a linear system and can be solved. We saw how, we saw how to solve these uh, similar equations when we talked about the Chinese remainder theorem. Okay, so this is this is one category of these uh, algorithm, uh, and and the third category uh, the third category is the cryptographically secure pseudo random generators. Okay, which uh, by the way, uh, uh, we saw that the the pseudo random generators pseudo random number generators. Uh, they, they are not sufficient, they can be easily, uh, we can easily get the A and B and the S0. So the, uh, the, the, uh, the special thing here is that we need to, to make them crypto, uh, cryptographically secure. Okay, so, um, uh, so, so we, we have to, to be able to make the output uh, uh, not easily predictable, okay? So, which means more precisely, uh, given in sequence of the bits of SI, the following output SI plus one cannot be predicted uh, in a polynomial time. Meaning that if uh, somebody get their hands on uh, some of the bits, right? Uh, so you cannot solve uh, or recover the, 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 the key master for the algorithm. So you should not be able to do that. Okay, so typically stream ciphers use these types of cryptographically secure pseudo random number generators and um, uh, and 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 the very very useful. So um, now we explain, I'm oh, sorry, now we explain these categories of the ram uh, uh, random number generators, the true, the pseudo random, and the cryptographic, uh, cryptographically secure. And we say, this is what we need to use for stream ciphers. Okay, because th these are predictable. These are not reproducible. We cannot reproduce true numbers. These are very easily predictable, but those are reproducible and hard to be predict. So we are gonna say, that this is cryptographically secure pseudo random number generator is what we use for stream ciphers. Okay. Now let's talk about the one time pad. We discussed it in multiple in, uh, places in our course. The one time pa pad is it is unconditionally secure algorithm or provides the perfect secrecy. Okay. So it's a uh, 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 so so. Um, oh well, let's 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 describe what's unconditionally secure crypto system first, and then and then we'll say that the one-time pad satisfies that. Uh, a crypto system is uncon unconditionally secure if it if it cannot be broken even with infinite computation resource computational resources, because really it provides uh, the, 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 the cipher text is completely independent, statistically independent from the keys and from the plain text, that's why, okay? Why? Because the cipher text is statistically independent. There is no correlation uh, between the cipher, test, uh, cipher text and uh, the, the plain text and the keys. The, the cipher text is, is, is independent, statistically independent, okay? No relation, you cannot draw any relation between the cipher text and the plain text or the cipher text and the key. The one-time pad is a crypto system developed uh, 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 based on stream cipher and has this property. Okay, so we we uh, um, uh, 
uh, we say that uh, we have this plain text and cipher text and key uh, consist of individual bits and and basically what we are doing we are really uh, 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 encrypting so so we have these key bits and we uh, uh, encrypting these uh, cipher text to produce um, to produce the um, to produce the uh, the uh, cipher text bit. So this is the plain text. XOR them with the with the with the key uh, bits and produce the cipher text bits. And and those key bits are completely random. Okay. Okay. So uh, 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 and this one condition random, and we'll see the condition about these. They are random and used ones. Okay. So go back to the uh, next stage. So. A one-time pad. The key stream bits. This uh, the, uh, is generated by a true random generator, and the key stream is uh, only used uh, in the communication and uh, only used once. Okay. So to, to just to to summarize this, and we say we say that the the bits are really random and used once. Okay. Uh, but here is the problem, okay? Um, this means if you have a plain text of a terabyte, right? Then you really need a key of one terabyte. Not only that, because it is not, uh, it is a true, a true random generator, then it is not reproducible. That means you need to transmit these keys, these key bits all the way to the, to the to to the receiving side, so you have to transmit the the cipher text and the 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 key as well, which is completely not practical. Okay, this is not practical. Again, if I have a plain text of one terabyte, then I have to produce a completely random key bits of one terabyte, and I have to transmit both the plain text of one terabyte and the key bits of one terabyte to the to the to the recipient not practical okay so this provides for me the perfect secrecy the one time pad unconditionally secure unfortunately it is not practical it depends on the true random number generators right which is which cannot be reproduced that's not good for me okay Okay, uh, linear feedback shift register are hardware constructs which uh, allow me to create pseudo random numbers. Okay, so basically these are flip flops, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, connected with a feedback. Notice that, okay, so that's why I like a shift register here. And then I have an, an XOR gate here, which sometimes I take and sometimes I don't. So this, these are, it says this connection is, is there, this P thing, this, or uh, either there or absent. Okay, here's an example. They, they, they produce a, a sequence of up to uh, two to the uh, to, to M uh, minus one, right? Uh, so if I have, let's say for example, let's, see, let's go to an example here. Okay, so here I have how many in the, the M equals three flip-flops. So I'm supposed to get a sequence of two to the M <clears throat> Minus one, that means seven. By the way, maximum sequence. So if you are not careful with these steps, notice this tab is present. This tab is absent. Okay. So if you look at we, we uh, mathematically we implementing this function. Look at the output here. If I see the output of the flip flops and I read them, so this is this looks to me as number two. This looks to me as oh sorry number four. This looks to me as number two. This looks to me as uh, uh, five, and this is six, seven, okay, three, and one, and four, two. Okay, look, look at that. We are repeating the sequence. We're going back here. So let's let's count the unique ones. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven, seven unique numbers of random uh, numbers, and then this will repeat, okay?
this will repeat. So uh, again, Y7, because we have three flip-flops, and this is the maximum sequence. Okay, you are typically that are used in hardware, and, there, and typically we have uh, in math polynomials that describe this system, okay, which is this one here, and you have uh, tables uh, produced by mathematicians for these uh, uh, math equations which maps to linear feedback shift registers. So linear feedback shift registers are used in hardware to implement uh, pseudo random uh, number pseudo random number generators. Okay, here's a, a, an example of a cipher. We're gonna give an example of cipher and show the operation just uh, 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 for you to see a real uh, uh, example and. Uh, uh, um, uh, we'll see it, it it will involve a little bit of complexity but you know every one of those yes we explained uh sort of like the the, the basics uh, about these stream ciphers but every one of those stream ciphers got its uh let's say uh individual characteristics so in this case the trivium is a stream cipher uh, which uses a 80-bit key okay uh, so uh, we have three shift registers, as we'll see shortly. And even though these uh, feedback shift registers, there are nonlinear components that are used to derive the output, and we'll see them in the shift registers. Okay, so here is the trivium. So this is the very first shift uh, register, which is A, right? And the size of A, 93 bits. And notice how the output of A, right? goes and becomes an input for sh uh, shift register B, which is 84 bits. And the output of B, it goes and becomes a input for shift register C. So these are, it's like, it's like you have here, A sends out its output to B, sends out its output to C. So, so these are the shift, how they are connected. And C here is one, one eleven bits. Um, SI is the XOR sum. Okay, so this is the XOR sum of all the three registers. So that the output here goes to this XOR and this one and this one, and we produce the key bit stream. Notice how in every in every uh, uh, in every one of those that produces the output of the shift register, we have some some kind of an interesting AND gate here, ANDing few bits and, and getting into, so these are the specifics of of the algorithm, okay? These are the specifics of the algorithm. And notice this one as well here, okay? All right. So uh, you, you get all that. Also notice how uh, some of these bits are pulled internally and sent out to this XOR at the beginning and sent out to the to the output XOR here. Okay, lots of these details to create this random as much as as random behavior of this of this uh, uh, of this uh, cipher. So you you really need to pay attention to these input output XOR input XOR these NAND gates, right? Okay, and how this shift register are connected to to create a large shift register, okay? All right. Now, the output, uh, uh, the cipher can be viewed as a circular with, with, with a length of 288, okay? And, and circular because, let me go back here, because the output of the C comes in and goes back to A. In fact, you can see it right here. Okay, so this output of here, this is C, goes back all the way, and it goes to the XNOR of the C. Uh, I'm sorry, to the to this XOR that that produces the input to the A register. Okay, so it's a it's a it's a large uh, shift uh, a large uh, shift register, circular shift register. Okay. All right, uh, so th the input of each register is computed as three. Okay, the output of, and, and one bit. So so you can see this is, these are the inputs. Uh, they are computing by 
uh, the, the 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 output coming from a from from the the, the previous uh, shift register like so here and some internal input bits from the internal input okay so this is so what it says here okay so this structure we need to initialize it and has a special initialization sequence an 80 bit initialization vector or a key is loaded into the 80 bit leftmost uh, of uh, the register a which is which is these these first 80 bits right and um um and 80 bit is loaded to the left uh, so, so uh, uh, and uh, an 80 bit uh, uh, key is loaded into the leftmost bit location of register b so we also load here 80 bit but here this one we refer to them as initialization vector and here we refer to them as key okay uh, all other register bits are zeros okay and then uh, we have uh, uh, exception these these bits uh, c109 c1110 uh, c11 they are set to one these are these are these locations right here they except those they are they are set to ones okay so the initialization is as follows the leftmost 80 bits of register a is loaded with initialization vector the leftmost 80 bits of uh, register uh, b initial uh, initialized uh, initialized with a key and those three bits initialized with ones and the rest of the keys are well, the rest of the bits are zeros then we clock uh, this register with these many clocks 1000 152 which means we are at we are we are running this shift register these many cycles okay after that cycle during those warm up we don't take any bits after those we take we start taking these bits which means after 1152 cycles at the 1153 cycle we start taking the bits because they are now random bits okay no, oh, of course, um, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, once you take this, then you XOR it with the with the data, okay? Because the stream cipher typically the challenge is really in generating these 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 uh, key streams. Okay, with this conclusion of the Trivium cipher, I conclude the lecture uh, of uh, uh, stream ciphers, and uh, thank you very much for uh, attending. I'm gonna. Now turn off the uh, the, the presentation. <clears throat>